If you're trying to solve a heat transfer problem, your first step, as always, is to model the situation. There are, let's talk about three parts of this. The first part is always to draw a diagram. What are the objects? Which way is the heat moving? What forms of heat transfer are taking place? How does the temperature vary as you go from one place to another? These are all crucial things to work out. Trust me on this. The next step is to work out what forms of heat transfer are taking place. We very often find that students try to work this out by saying, oh, I know the temperature and the de distance, therefore I need an equation with that. The trouble is, the equations for conduction, radiation, they, they all have the same variables in. So just trying to work out what variables you know is not going to help you. You actually have to think physically about what's going on. For example, radiation. Nice simple equation relates the heat flow to the temperature of something, so it's very tempting to use it all the time. But radiation will only apply if things are transparent. So, for example, my hand here will be radiating, and some of that radiation will hit my hand over there. So, you can use radiation in this case for losing heat from my hand. But if I put something in between the two, so I've got my two hands here and a, in this case, a painting in between. Radiation won't be able to get through. The radiation is a form of light. It only travels through things that are transparent. So, for example, you're not going to get any radiation from the front of this to the back or inside my hand. Convection applies when there's a fluid. So you don't expect convection in a vacuum in space. It won't cool your spacecraft down. You will get convection, say, off my body because it's warm and that will cause the heat to rise and flow around it. However, for convection to work, the fluid has to be big enough to be able to move. For example, in my jumper, there's a lot of little air holes, but those are very small, so the air is not going to be able to flow from one place to another. So heat flow from the inside of my jumper to the outside of my jumper is almost entirely by conduction. That's why you wear a jumper. I mean, if, if a layer of air had the same insetting effect, you wouldn't need a jumper, you just have a centimetre of air. But if you did have that centimetre of air with no jumper, then you get convection. If I'm wearing a coat, once again, it often traps a layer of air inside. And if that layer of air is small enough, that can be a good insulator. If it's a big bit of air, though, you might get convection flowing inside, or even radiation from my body to the coat. So it all depends on the geometry of this. Advection applies when you're moving fluid in and out. Here in my office there's a vent in the roof and that's pumping hot air out. That's advection. If there's no hot or cold fluid coming in or out, you're not going to get that. So you should always think, how could heat go from this place to another? Is there really a fluid present? Is it transparent? Unless you think about these things, the equations are not going to save you. The third, third thing to think about is making some simplifications. The most common simplification we make is to assume uniform temperatures. So for example, we might ask you a question saying, how long will it take your house to warm up by 10 degrees? That's a simplification, because the house is not all at the same temperature. Uh, different parts will be different temperatures. However, it's a very common simplification, for example, let's say you're trying to calculate boiling a kettle, to assume the whole kettle is at the same temperature inside. It won't be precisely accurate, but it may be good enough to get you a rough answer. Likewise, you might assume that all the air in a house is at roughly the same temperature when trying to calculate these things. So, draw a diagram, think hard about which heat transfer mechanisms actually apply, and make simplifications like assuming uniform temperatures in certain areas.